our town navi mumbai so it is asking for you know this okay so great evening ladies and gentlemen and uh, i anshul sharma welcome you on this show Hashtag Women Power, a global movement having uh, presence in more than twenty countries and uh, having an objective of touching more than a million women by end of two thousand twenty-four. And I think we are heading very fast uh, towards our objective, and very soon we are going to achieve it. And uh, in the series of uh, discussing and encouraging and empowering each one of us. with the excellent journey of uh, women power today on the occasion of doctors day i have an established doctor dr vandana chen who is an uh, established eye surgeon and oh. cataract surgeon in navi mumbai and uh, an established social worker as well so oh. very contradictory uh, you know but uh, yes she is and that we'll be knowing uh, during course of action hmm. uh, you know course of discussion in fact and as normally it is said that uh, uh, to keep a doctor away have, uh, have an apple a day <laughs> but but now it is changed because if the doctor is beautiful and uh, very charming i think we need to keep that apple away and uh, i think we need to follow this and uh, <laughs> dr vandana who is such a beautiful and young energetic uh, you know doctor amongst us and as uh, you know in uh, uh, indian cinema bollywood everywhere so many things are been uh, you know shared and talked about only eyes So as uh, mm. one of the you know one of the uh, shade that I liked uh, too much it it is a, आपकी आंखें ऊंची हुई तो दुआ बन गई, नीची हुई तो हाया बन गई, और जो झुककर उठी तो खता बन गई, और जो झुककर झुकी तो अदा बन गई। हाँ बाबा बाबा। So many so many you know alike uh, sayings and uh, so many uh, things that we have always talked about or listened about only eyes. so ladies and gentlemen eyes are i think one of the most important uh, part of our human body and to protect eyes and uh, to protect that vision we have people like dr vandana jain who uh, you know tell us about how we can do uh, and how we can secure our vision and eyesight and uh, that we will be uh, uh, you know knowing during the course of discussion also from uh, dr vandana and uh, for this program that has been started by dr bakshi and uh, dr kiran bedi is first face of this movement and we have so many other established women power attached to our this program and uh, my co-host neeti sharma is also there and uh, for this program the format is we, we will be having and catering to bilingual people wherein uh, it will be conducted in english and hindi so over to you miss neeti थैंक यू थैंक यू सो वेरी मच अंशुल जी शुभ संध्या सत श्री अकाल वेरी गुड इवनिंग वेरी वॉम इवनिंग टू ईच एंड एवरी वन जो भी हमारे ये मुंबर चैप्टर के हमारे दर्शक गण है आप सभी को एक बार फिर से शुभ संध्या जी रिके बख्शी जी लिख रहे हैं शुभ संध्या और आज ये जो मुंबई चैप्टर है जो हैश टैग विमेन पावर ब्लू बर्ल मूवमेंट के अंतर्गत चल रहा है और दैट इज प्रेजेंटेड That is presented by Global Talent Company Private Limited, right? जी हाँ आज जो मुंबई चैप्टर है उसमें हमारे साथ जो है वो है बहुत ही प्यारी सी बहुत खूबसूरत सी शब्द सुन के आप सुन रहे हैं ना खूबसूरत खूबसूरत सी डॉक्टर वंदना <laughs> कभी देखा अपने ब्यूटी एंड ब्रेन का मिक्सचर जी हाँ शी इज अमंग दोस्त और इनके लिए एक प्यारा सा शेर मैं भी अर्ज करना चाहूंगी अंशु जी यदि आप बोले तो कि रोज एक ताजा शेर कहाँ से लिखूं आपके लिए रोज एक ताजा शेर कहाँ से लिखूं आपके लिए आप तो हर रोज एक नई बात हुआ करती हैं <laughs> <laughs> तो आज बहुत ही प्यारा इंट्रेक्शन होने वाला है हमारा डॉक्टर जैन के साथ क्योंकि उनसे हम जानेंगे समझेंगे बूझेंगे कि कैसे आंखों की देखभाल भी करें और कहाँ से डॉक्टर के दिमाग में लाइक डॉक्टर तो हैं उनके दिमाग में कैसे आइडिया आया कि दैट शिल हैव टू बी स्पेशलाइज्ड इन आई तो डॉक्टर वंदना आपसे आज हम बिल्कुल शुरुआत करते हैं अपने इवेंट की अपने कार्यक्रम की और आई ओवर टू माय होस्ट अंशुल शर्मा जी अंशुल मैम ओवर टू यू या या थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच 
and uh, so without being you know wall between you guys and uh, dr vandana i would just request dr vandana to share her story that how she has founded uh, you know one of the most uh, established hospital uh, catering to only eye sickness in navi mumbai advanced eye hospital and institute where in uh, lot many uh, people have uh, you know secured their eyesight and uh, they have got it corrected and uh, they specialize into cataract uh, surgeries also and uh, apart from that she has so far co founded so many other you know international and national ventures as well and she has uh, various multiple you know international patents to her name so i would request dr vandana to just share her story that uh, being a girl from delhi how she started her journey and how was uh, it uh, till so far and how uh, well she achieved so much in such short a span of time so over to you dr vandana uh, first of all thank you anshul and thank you neeti madam for having me here today it is truly an honor and a privilege to be here on this podium and of course a very warm welcome to you know all our audience who are listening to me today and listening to both of you i think it's a great initiative where um, we as women we can uh, you know inspire and uh, learn from each other so uh, you know jokes apart anshul every time i interact with you i get inspired by you uh, how you manage yourself and how you manage so many students and how your students love you so much so i think um, you know it's truly an honor to be here today and you know as far my journey is concerned um, you know i'm i'm yes you're right i'm from delhi and i'm i'm surprised that you remembered that that i'm from delhi i'm sure i would have casually mentioned it in some conversation um so yeah i i grew up in delhi in a in a very conservative uh, um, you know banya family and um, i was probably destined to just get married and you know be a housewife in some rich family um, but i think i was just a little bit uh, like not ready for that mentally um, and right from the childhood i wanted my life to stand for something else so i decided that you know um, i would do something and i think in so i would not say that uh, yes i wanted to be a doctor but i think i wanted to be a doctor not because there was something in my life that influenced that um, i wanted to be a doctor because there was nothing better i knew at that time what i else i could be so i focused on being a doctor uh so much so that i was actually into athletics and i was doing really well and used to play at national level um but because i wanted to be a doctor i gave up everything and i said okay i need to focus only on being a doctor and there was a condition from my parents that if you get admission in delhi then we'll let you pursue it but uh, women from our family don't go and live into hostels so you will not be allowed to go and live anywhere else so i said okay i need to study a little bit harder and make sure i get admission in delhi itself and you know by stroke of good luck I did get admission into Delhi, and as soon as my MBBS got over, I got married to a wonderful person, my husband, uh, my current husband, uh, uh, Arvind Singhal, who I think changed the trajectory of my life, honestly. And I always tell him, "You are the wing beneath my wings. Um, uh, you are the yeah." So you know, uh, I started seeing things in a completely different way after the marriage. Before marriage, it was all about making sure that. you know i my parents are happy with what i want but after marriage i really started thinking of um you know what i really want my life to stand for and why i care happened was because um when i was in my mbbs my father who only had one seeing eye he had to undergo a surgery in his eye and it was a very complicated case so one of the best surgeons in delhi at that time was dr asik vajpayee in all india institute of medical sciences yes. so we got him operated there but even the surgery was so complicated he developed something called corneal edema in which the front part of the eye the you know the black thing that develops a swelling so one eye he was already not seeing and after surgery the other eye also he stopped seeing so 15 days he lived like a blind man Oh my god and that was really traumatic for me as a daughter to see my father you know not being able to see anything and like really desperate and uh, feeling very helpless right so i realized that how important like you know of course all five senses are important and all parts of our body are important but i is very very important because suddenly somebody who used to see and suddenly somebody who doesn't see it's a big big misery and that's when i decided that i want to do ophthalmology and i will you know uh, in my own capacity and with whatever i can i will try to see how much vision i can give to people and um, 
So yeah, I mean, I pursued my ophthalmology from Delhi, from uh, Mamsi Malanazad Medical College, my MBBS and uh, my uh, this thing both from there. But my guide in uh, Mamsi influenced me, and I decided that I want to pursue further education. So I went on to do a fellowship in cornea, which is a, a further subspecialization of ophthalmology from LV Prasad Eye Institute, which is in Hyderabad. That institute is truly an you know epitome of excellence, and I learned. Uh, discipline, excellence, uh, being humble, grounded, everything from my teachers and just that the whole ethos of that organization there. Um, then I did one more fellowship from uh, Harvard Medical School, which was a shorter fellowship. Um, my agenda was to make sure that there was nothing in my speciality that I didn't know of at the time. So I thought it would be good if I also go out, but I realized that the training in India was even better than the training there and I could actually teach uh, those people also at the time. So, but yeah, that was a great experience because it's just that, you know, we, we have different ways of um, the way they practice and the way we practice. So it was a great experience. I practiced for four years to realize that um, uh, practicing full time is, is great thing, but um, it doesn't satisfy the inner me. Like there was a more craving in my mind. So I took a sabbatical for two years and I went on to do my MBA from Stanford. While I was at Stanford, I got involved in starting uh, two medical device companies. Uh, one of them I co-founded with a friend and one of them I mentored uh, a team. Uh, so we had uh, bio, bio design innovation um, as a organization, as a sub uh, institute in Stanford. And uh, one of the teams which was working on an eye related device, I started working with them and mentoring them on that device. So that was great experience. I spent two and a half years uh, you know, stayed on for a little bit longer after my MBA just to see that both the businesses can actually, you know, both the startups can reach the next level. Came back to India and then thought that, okay, now I've done my MBA. I'm, I'm, I was missing being an eye doctor. So how do I marry the two? Hmm. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, obviously, you know, I still wanted to practice. I didn't want to not practice though for two years, I did not practice at all. And uh, honestly, I didn't miss it because um, it was like really intense time and I learned a lot during those two years. So no complaints. But as soon as I came back, I started missing my interactions with the patients. I started missing the surgeries and, you know, just the intensity of being, because there is certain amount of intensity that is involved when you're also practicing as a doctor. Yeah. Uh, but I was very clear that I don't want to do that as a full-time thing. Uh, so I thought, okay, let me just marry the both. And that's how Anshul, we started Advanced Eye Hospital here. I took some loans and, you know, some friends, family and fools, as they say, the three Fs who invest into your business. So we got the three Fs to invest into our business. Because when I came back, if at all, I had a lot of student loans on my head. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was, um, yeah, of course, yeah. it was great. So <laughs> Um, the three years, first three years were a little tough, honestly, because, you know, when you start a new organization, uh, even though however good you may be, every business goes through its, you know, it's uh, time to reach, uh, you know, certain level of scale and certain um, you know, profitability. But after three years, so for the first three years, I was completely devoted to it. But once the hospital became sustainable, profitable, um, then again, I, you know, things started itching for me and I was like, okay, I need to do something else. Um, so I co-founded at that time, a business with my husband and two of his friends. Um, but soon realized that you can't run a business with your husband. Um, you know, your, <laughs> your business one. troubles <laughs> should not. <laughs> I'm come back. So I took a back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I mean, there are, you know, honestly, there are women, I mean, there are couples who do it together, like, you know, yeah. there are very big organizations also where both husband and wife work shoulder to shoulder. Okay. But I realized I was probably not mature enough and mentally ready to do that. Yes. And we were bringing business or, you know, our startup troubles uh, to our dining table, and which wasn't the best thing to do. Really? Um, so I took a back seat on that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I took a back seat on that. And I co-founded another startup with a, a friend of mine. Okay. Right? So that was great. Uh, so I was still practicing um, in Advanced Eye, of course, and I was still managing Advanced Eye Hospital and also doing the startup. Just got really um, too much for me, honestly. It was like 20 hours a day work. Uh, my health started getting impacted. Uh, so after around one, one and a half years, I, um, you know, I took a, uh, I decided that uh, I cannot do two things at the same time. In fact, three things, because obviously practicing a doctor also is, has its own ups yeah. and downs. Yeah. Right? So I said, I can't do three things at the same time. I'm having so many. <laughs> so <laughs> then... Uh, there, there are many, 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 many. <laughs> There's a big list of your achievements. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
so then i said okay and um, um, you know i said okay so you know i spoke to my co-founder and i said you know what i won't be able to do justice to myself or to this business uh, so we parted ways the, that startup is still running and of course you know all my wishes and blessings to them uh, my husband's startup is also doing great fit to fly and i continue to uh, you know be an advisor and help them wherever i can i am involved like i know exactly what's going on because that's the area of my interest health tech is like right down my alley so i uh, we merged our hospital with a bigger group called dr agarwal sai hospital and i joined the management team it's a fabulous group the management team is just fantastic um, i'm i'm given continuously new challenges because they have realized that if we don't challenge this woman then she'll run away and she'll start doing something else <laughs> so i'm enjoying for the last one year uh, one and a half years i've been i've been with associated with dr agarwal's eye hospital group and working with them and it has been a fantastic journey on the side i have started doing angel investing because i want to support startups um and i also advise uh, uh, a vc house on their uh, healthcare uh, investments so that's what i'm currently involved in oh my god wow oh my god <laughs> i think so inspirational yeah. and uh, so many things uh, you know despite of knowing you for so many years so many things uh, which have came you know new to me also so it's really brilliant and uh, one uh, you know one very prominent aspect of uh, vandana which she has not shared hmm. Uh, that apart from uh, all these work that she's doing, uh, wherein uh, uh, you know helping uh, uh, these angel investors yeah. and uh, uh, investing into new ventures and helping the new startups uh, yeah. for them, and uh, in uh, Advanced Eye Hospital also uh, they have a you know uh, institute also wherein I think ninety percent of students are uh, sponsored ones. Yeah. Am I right, Vandana? So yeah, I mean, I should. We started a trust on the side uh, after three years. Once the hospital stress was over, we decided that now it's time to give back. Mm. So we started a trust uh, where the whole agenda was that anybody who comes to hospital, irrespective of their paying capacity, should be able to get the care, wow. right? So um, in in the trust, initially we funded the trust ourselves, and then luckily we get we got started getting support from some of our friends and family, and with that we started two initiatives. One is. Uh, you know we we used to do camps and all in peripheral areas in tribal areas and get people from there and uh, do their surgeries and then send them back so that way those people who could not afford to get a surgery at a private eye hospital with the kind of quality that obviously we you know we give to our patients they could get the same quality at absolutely like negligible or in fact no cost right so because that was uh, directed through the trust to the hospital so the trust supported the expenses of the hospital of course hospital was not trying to make any profits on them but at least just get this support for the expenses since it was a it was a private organization and we had shareholders so we also had to be accountable there and that's that was the best way we could do it then second thing we started doing through that was that we wanted to make sure that there is a lot of awareness in the community around i care so for that we started a lot of outreach activities so we started organizing a lot of camps a lot of uh, eye talks eye related talks about how to take care of your eyes what does it what does it mean like you know for example a lot of people have a misconception ki subah subah aankhi ki aankhon ki exercise karenge to aankhe achhi rahengi but that's not necessarily true right so obviously uh, besides the fact that how do you take care of certain diseases that may be in, in uh, you know affecting your eyes but also how do you just generally take care of your eyes so we started organizing those kinds of lectures we started organizing outreach activities we started doing camps in outreach in like really really far off tribal places like we went even as far as mahabaleshwar and stuff we got like lot of tribal people from there and we performed surgeries on them and then we also started education as anshul mentioned so we started an optometry uh, diploma which was a two year program and through the diploma our agenda was again the same that how do we get children who first of all do not they don't know what they want in their life right mm -hmm. and some of them are not affording enough to even be able to support any kind of education for themselves Hmm. so um, majority of the children who were part of our uh, initial cohort um were actually they couldn't afford it so we supported their uh, education it was a two year diploma program and then of course unfortunately we so we only had three cohorts that we could complete unfortunately then covid hit and uh, nobody took like there were no new admissions after hmm. that and we didn't also push it hmm. because optometry is not a program we can run online it's a program which actually requires children to be there and because it's a lot of this that is actually practical they need to you know and we didn't want to take the risk with 
with co- you know covid uh, blazing last year so we haven't admitted anybody uh, from last year onwards and we'll probably again uh, restart the program once this uh, covid situation becomes uh, better but yeah and the last thing that we used to do through our trust was um, we used to organize a walk against blindness again the agenda was similar it was more around advocacy you know that how do you get uh, people who who are powerful who have say in the uh, in our community and our society so for example institutes like evolve with anshul heading that right with the uh, various ngos with the uh, various colleges and schools uh, with various government bodies how do we get all of them together at on one platform and advocate about uh, what needs to happen and how big is this problem so cornea eye donation or just how do you take care of your eyes as in how do you prevent blindness and how do you reduce the blindness rates in our society so we organized this walk i think we've organized seven times and we were supposed to schedule to uh, organize it this year also so the last walk happened last year january every year january we would do the walk and anshul has been associated with our walk against blindness which is by the way the largest walk against blindness in the world we see almost anywhere between 7 to 10000 people attend this walk um, every year but of course we haven't done it this year because of again uh, you know we didn't want to take any risk with the, this and then of course once corona situation improves we will restart because i think um, this whole uh, where we can influence uh, in our own sub- small way uh, people who are uh, you know uh, who who are important and who can actually make a difference to the world um uh, we will restart that walk so this is something all of these activities we do do through our trust okay excellent That's great. and so let me tell you know let me tell viewers and uh, who are going to watch this program later on that uh, this walk against blindness uh, blindness as vandana said that it is uh, one of the largest walk against blindness awareness uh, you know walk against blindness and it is in the world and we uh, like for this particular program we have got support from across industries from across uh, you know sectors and in fact uh, vivek oberai uh, shankar mahadevan people like them are uh, you know coming and uh, just giving back to uh, society in their own mm-hmm. ways and uh, i think they all come just for a gesture where in um, you know they also want to educate people uh, because in indian society specifically there are so many myths about eye donation that once the uh, you know the person uh, passed away and if we donate his eyes uh, so there are so many uh, you know ritual or religious uh, conservative thoughts are there so just to uh, you know educate people that mm-hmm. there is nothing that sort of and uh, it it doesn't uh, disfigure the face Hmm. in fact it is the removal of uh, only part of the eye it is not the entire uh, you know uh, the eye that we see it uh, goes and i think i will request vandana to share that also uh, hmm. to tell viewers now that if uh, you know we want to donate our eyes how we can get associated uh, with uh, your institute or your uh, hmm. hospital and what they need to do beforehand and hmm. uh, Uh, like what are the disbeliefs that we were having as indian people and uh, what is the truth behind it so vandana please share uh, you know what sure. some uh, light about it sure i think first of all you know a lot of religions believe that if you donate your eye in this uh, you know when you die then next janam jo kehte hai na ki punar janam jo hoga mm-hmm. usme you will be do- born without eyes Hmm. obviously that is complete uh, misconception and i'm sure all educated folks out there will know so when a person dies their eye if we can take those eyes you know there those eyes can be used for two different purposes some the eyes the quality of eyes is very good that if we remove two eyes from one person those two eyes can give vision to almost three to four people right hmm. and as anshul mentioned we are not removing the entire eye we pretty much just remove this you know this black part in front of the black part is hmm. the cornea hmm. so we just remove that and then we put a shell there a plastic shell there so anybody who will live and look at the dead body will not even get to know that something has been done right so there is no disfigurement even of the dead body because a lot of people fear that there will be disfigurement and we don't want the disfigurement of our loved one who has passed away right and i completely understand that sentiment but there is no disfigurement because we are not moving the whole eye we are just removing the cornea so that's number one number two i think it is very important that um, when you know that your loved one in certain scenarios you already know that your loved one is about to go right that's number one and in certain scenarios it's a sudden demise at least in those scenarios where you already know that your loved one is about to go 
it's very important first of all to be mentally prepared that you would like to donate the eyes because honestly once the death happens there is so much grief which is there that in that moment of grief it is very difficult to think about this that okay we want to donate the eyes because there is some amount of coordination and initiative which is required from the family side in india the permission or i will say the consent of the next of the kin whosoever that next of the kin is whether it's a son daughter mother father whosoever is that person their consent is extremely important so the eye donation cannot happen without the consent of the next of the kin so which means family first of all has to be mentally ready and they should give consent for that now when they are ready and uh, they want to do it they should just call there is a universal number or they can even call like let's say for example our hospital and we will put the right people who are authorized to go and remove the eyes so at the time of the removal we require several things we require first of all a death certificate copy because we cannot remove an eye from a person where we do not have a death certificate copy right secondly we need to understand that what was the death reason for example if somebody died due to cancer right or for example somebody died due to septicemia there are certain diseases where we cannot use that eye to transplant it to another human being but we can at least use that eye for research and for training because when doctors like me when i was training to be a cornea specialist i didn't start directly doing the surgeries on human beings i did lot of surgeries in the wet labs first okay. and how do you do surgeries in the wet lab you still require those kind of corneas and those eyes which are not being used for other human beings because either their quality is not very good or because they are not suitable medically to be transplanted into another human being so i trained by practicing on them and then that's how i could move on to you know use them in human beings so when you decide first of all you need to call keep these documents ready the medical documents and the death of certificate uh, death certificate ready third thing you should do is you should keep a wet cotton on the eye so that the cornea doesn't dry up because sometimes in the dead body the eye the eyelid opens up and the cornea gets exposed and it dries up so you can just close the eyes and just put a wet cotton on top of that and make sure there is no fan like running continuously on top of it because again that can dry hmm. the sooner the cornea can be removed the better it is normally we say the time window is around 6 hours if it can be removed within 6 hours it's great if it is longer than 6 hours we can still remove it but you know more the time passes after death the the quality of the cord the tissue can go down you know so better to like that's why i'm saying that if you have interest you should think about it before that yeah. would you like to do it of course if it's a sudden death that that requires a lot of maturity on the family to say that you know yes it is it's a, you know it's a very sad moment for the entire family but we would still like to do it because maybe the person who died that was his wish that when i die like for example i would want my eyes to get donated when i die and my entire family know it so god forbid if i die tomorrow they will still donate my eyes hmm. right because they know that was my wish so i think and that's the beauty of i pledging yeah one one question so when we ask people to pledge hmm. one question like go ahead sure in between uh, like see if the patient is dying in hospital it is easier for them to think over and you know have doctors immediately as you mentioned that first six hours are very important to donate eyes especially okay but if uh, uh, a patient dies at home so he may or may, like so is there any facility wherein doctors can go to the uh, their residence or that place and uh, can uh, extract that cornea ek ek aur question so we go at people's houses all the time banna ji ek aur question hai mera relate to this aapne bola ke eye donation mein aap you required a death certificate right yadi hum death certificate सर्टिफिकेट की बात करें वेन अ पर्सन डाई तो डेथ सर्टिफिकेट बनने में भी बहुत टाइम लेता है तो इज इट रियली रिक्वायर्ड फॉर यू पीपल यू नो के आपका जब आप डेथ सर्टिफिकेट नीति इट डज नॉट नेसेसरली मीन लाइक सर्टिफिकेट सर्टिफिकेट बट इवन फॉर एग्जाम्पल डॉक्टर डॉक्यूमेंट विच से डॉक्टर uh, like 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 
देखने वाले या हिंदी समझने वाले हैं जिनको इंग्लिश बहुत अच्छे से नहीं आती समझ में आप थोड़ी सी डिटेल में ये चीजें उनको भी समझा दीजिए कि कैसे डॉक्टर का विजिट हो सकता है कैसे पूरा रिमूवल नहीं होता है आंखों का और कैसे इसको मिथ ना माना जाए और कैसे डोनेशन किया जाए थोड़ा सा हिंदी में डिटेल्स में भी बता देंगे तो आई थिंक इट विल बी बेनिफिशियल फॉर एवरी वन सो दोस्तों नीति मैडम ने जो अभी मुझसे जिक्र किया है रिगार्डिंग आई डोनेशन राइट सो आई डोनेशन पहली बात तो है किसी भी जीवित इंसान की नहीं ली जाती है आंखें हमेशा मरने के बाद ही दान की जा सकती है तो जब किसी इंसान की डेथ होती है हमारे पास एक टाइम विंडो होता है जिसमें हम अगर आंख निकाल सके तो वो बेस्ट होता है और वो छह घंटे का टाइम हमारे पास होता है बेस्ट टाइम पीरियड होता है छह घंटे के बाद भी निकाल सकते हैं पर उसके बाद शायद क्वालिटी पे थोड़ा जो हमारा जो हम निकालते हैं उस पर थोड़ा फर्क पड़ जाता है अब इस आई डोनेशन से रिलेटेड बहुत सारे हमारे दिमाग में गलत मिथ्स हैं हमारे दिमाग में तो क्या मिथ्स हैं वो पहला जो मिथ है हमारे दिमाग में ये है कि अगर हमने इस जन्म में अपनी आंख दान कर दी तो अगले जन्म में हमारा हम जब पैदा होंगे तो हमारी आंख नहीं होंगी काफी रिलीजन ऐसा बिलीव करते हैं बट दैट्स एक्चुअली अ मिथ सो ऐसा कुछ नहीं है जो आप जब इंसान मर चुका है उसके लिए वो आंखें कुछ काम की नहीं है पर पर उसकी वो दो आंखों से चार से पांच लोगों को देखने के मौका मिल सकता है तो इसके लिए मैं डेफिनेटली इंकरेज करूंगी कि हमें ये चीज अपने जहन में हमेशा रखनी चाहिए कि कैसे हम अपनी सोसाइटी में ये चीज इंकरेज करें लोगों को और प्रमोट कर सके इसको प्रमोट करने के दो चार तरीके होते हैं पहला होता है आई प्लेजिंग कि आज के दिन पे आई एज अ लाइव इंडिविजुअल मैं प्लेज कर रही हूँ कि मैं जब मेरी जब डेथ हो जाएगी तो मैं अपनी आंखें दान करना चाहूंगी अब ये चीज मेरे नियर नियर वंस जो मेरे हस्बैंड हैं मेरे माता पिता हैं जो भी मेरे आसपास हैं उनको ये चीज पता होनी चाहिए कि मैंने अपनी आई प्लेज की है सो okay. दैट so जब मेरी डेथ होगी वो लोग इस चीज को ऑनर कर सकेंगे कैसे ऑनर करेंगे बाय कॉलिंग एन आई डन ये जो आई डोनेशन जो हम आई रिमूवल जो हम करते हैं ये घर में भी किया जा सकता है और हॉस्पिटल में भी किया जा सकता है और आई रिमूवल पूरा नहीं किया जाता खाली ये जो ब्लैक हिस्सा है उसके आसपास एक ट्रांसपेरेंट पार्ट होता है खाली उसको कॉर्निया बोला जाता है हम उसको निकालते हैं और ऊपर से एक शेल डाल देते हैं तो किसी को देखने पर यह पता भी नहीं चलता है तो कोई डिस्फिगरमेंट नहीं होती है मतलब फेस एकदम ऑड नहीं लगता है बिल्कुल नॉर्मल फेस ही दिखाई देता है हाँ तो जब भी अगर आप इसके बारे में सोचते हैं मान लीजिए कि आपके आस पड़ोस में या कहीं आपकी फैमिली में अगर ऐसा कुछ अनफॉर्चुनेट ऐसा कुछ होता है तो आप तो सबसे पहले जो है जो पर्सन है उनकी आंखों को बंद कर दीजिए और उसके ऊपर एक वेट कॉटन को रख दीजिए ताकि वो आंखें ड्राई अप ना हो जाए दैट्स नंबर वन नंबर टू उसके ऊपर बहुत जोर से फैन ना चले क्योंकि उससे भी ड्राइनेस हो जाती है राइट नंबर तीन कुछ कुछ डॉक्यूमेंट्स लगते हैं जब आई रिमूवल से पहले जिसमें कॉज ऑफ डेथ मतलब क्या क्या बीमारी थी जिसके कारण पेशेंट की डेथ हुई है और अगर डॉक्टर का सर्टिफिकेट कि भाई हाँ इनकी डेथ हो गई है बिकॉज ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए कि गलती से ऐसा कोई इंसान जो सिर्फ यू नो क्या क्या कहना चाहिए कि ब्रेन डेड है और बाकी सब उसका चल रहा है और हम उसको मान उसको मरा हुआ मानकर गलती से उसकी आंखें निकाल लें तो वो सब चीजें नहीं होनी चाहिए उसके लिए डॉक्टर का एक सर्टिफिकेट जरूरी होता है कि वो इंसान एक्चुअली में मर चुका है राइट सो आई थिंक फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस हू आर आज हम में से जो भी जीवित हैं और हम सब जो इस प्रोग्राम को सुन रहे हैं सबसे पहले हमें तो सिर्फ प्लेज कर देना चाहिए कि हम अपने जा, अपने जाने के बाद हमारी आंखें दान करेंगे फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई नो आई हैव प्लेज माई आईज आई नो अंशुल हैज प्लेज आर आईज and i will encourage hmm. all of you to also pledge your eyes ji definitely it is very important and uh, see as uh, you know in india itself there are 15 billion blind people hmm. and out of this 15 billion 3 billion that is 26% of uh, you know the entire uh, uh, population blind population is belong to children the small kids who are hmm. blind and and it is uh, you know recoverable they get mm. blind in young age or their small age wherein uh, like if they identify it at the right time uh, mm. and as uh, dr vandana also mentioned that time is very important uh, when it comes to eyes mm-hmm. so if we identify that this particular problem is arising and uh, 
it can be uh, recovered or it the person can uh, put the uh, it can uh, the person can be given the side the proper side so vandana uh, now the question comes what are the early stage symptoms if any person or anybody uh, sees uh, that these are some symptoms and occurring and uh, it could lead to a li uh, little blind blindness mm -hmm. or maybe uh, short sightedness so please just share like what are the early symptoms that can be identified at the uh, early stages and if we identify those uh, we can safeguard our you know vision and eyesight right so actually um, you know frankly um, it's not just about the early symptoms honestly which is more relevant here i think what happens is for example early symptoms could be just mild blurring of vision that blurring of vision you can have because of thousands of reasons the very simple reason could be just that you have a eye power right and that could be very simply solved by wearing glasses the most important problem that tends to happen and this is what we notice in in our um, you know in our experiences is that when people have a problem some percentage of people ignore it because they feel the problem is not severe mm. enough certain percentage of people don't ignore it they will come to the doctor mm. they will understand okay this is what is happening to them they'll take the treatment and after that they'll forget about mm. it and some percentage of people will not forget about it they will continue to do the regular checkups mm. so i think so i will like to classify the eye conditions in various different ways now early signs and symptoms broadly can be one of course you notice that you are having some mild blurring of vision which can vary in severity from mild to severe it could be impacting one eye it could be impacting both eyes that's number one you could be seeing certain floating objects right in front of your eye we call them floaters okay. you may be experiencing pain in the eye you may be noticing halos around the eyes you may be experiencing severe headaches right mm. you could be noticing that when you change your posture suddenly the vision is impacted right and then it becomes all right after some time right or you could be even noticing that certain parts in your vision field you are able to see and some parts you are not able to see hmm. right okay so these are all different signs and symptoms which could be because of varied reasons like there hmm. are hundreds of diseases which could be responsible for same signs and signs and symptoms right some of these diseases are simply treatable by things like eye glasses or just by certain medicines and they are treatable right we take care of them once and for all they are taken care of however certain conditions for example if i am a diabetic and i have diabetic retinopathy which basically means that diabetes has started affecting my retina now that's not a one time disease that is a disease that requires a continuous care and a continuous follow up for example the just the other day i had operated on a patient i had done the cataract surgery for the patient he had a diabetic retinopathy which was a last stage of diabetic retinopathy he had undergone lasers and by god's grace his vision was stable he disappeared for two years after the surgery because he just assumed that after the cataract surgery he's everything has been taken care of so we need to understand in eye there are different parts and each part is independent of each other just because we have done a cataract surgery does not mean that the retina cannot further deteriorate so he came back recently he is like doctor you had done the cataract surgery why i can't see now so we checked his retina and we realized that his diabetic retinopathy had progressed a lot and in the last two years he did not bother to get himself checked mm -hmm. so the point is lot of times i sure it's not even about identifying early signs and symptoms it's about understanding what problem you have and mm -hmm. what are the implications how frequently you need to do the follow up so it's very important to discuss with your eye doctor that how frequently you need to follow up for your disease and what are the implications if you don't mm -hmm. right a lot of times patients have a very short term memory they forget they're like doctor oh why you didn't tell me i was like we not why we just up? don't tell you <laughs> we act, we also write it down for you that you have to follow mm -hmm. up after 3 months and i opened up his file which was with him i said have you ever opened up your own file at least with everyone you looked at me with a blank Rita. face absolutely so <laughs> unfortunately our memory is very short term we forget what conversation we had with the doctor and that's fine you know you uh -huh. don't have to remember everything that your doctor has said we are busy we have hundreds of things to take care of and manage our families and our profession etc but i think mm -hmm. what is more important is to understand what your disease the implication of it on your future and what you need to do 
people keep it under control that the retinopathy for example can lead to blindness if you don't take care of it glaucoma which means basically pressure inside the eye can slowly lead to nerve damage if you don't take care of it it's a controllable disease not a curable disease which means you have to regularly get yourself checked and assessed if you don't take care of it you can turn blind like that there are several conditions in the eye which can make a eye go blind however if you are careful and you get your regular checkups done then pretty much 99.9% of the conditions are curable treatable and controllable okay that's great <laughs> that applies in uh, when uh, the patient is mature but how about uh, when uh, it's a small child when the like um, uh, as uh, the data says that 26% of uh, the entire blind population or the people having uh, sight uh, you know uh, sickness 26% of it is uh, children so when the child is very small he may not be able to identify or tell uh, you know parents that i have got a uh, headache or i have some uh, different irritation in eye so how how to identify in such uh, situation so you know you'll be surprised how small children if when you observe you get the idea whether the child is able to see or not for example mm-hmm. if you notice a child going too close to a tv screen or mm-hmm. uh, you know keeping the book too close to them or not responding to your uh, you know like your if you are waving a child from far and he is not responding to you at all right so there are signs and symptoms that you start get to know and for of course a very small child let's say a 6 month old child who has not yet started these kind of things mm-hmm. there it may be very difficult but if the mother is vigilant she can she'll get to know that my child is not able to you know because she'll notice that he is not reacting to anybody who's a little bit far off when you come close to the child he'll smile he'll laugh he'll do all kinds of things when you joke around with the you know you, you make faces to the kid and you notice the child is not reacting that's not normal mm-hmm. right any kid who's 6 months old when you will make faces to the kid or you'll you know you'll uh, you know like uh, goof around with the kid the child will respond in some way right but nevertheless we also give recommendations on the way the child eye care and eye checkups have to be done so the the recommendations are that the one eye checkup should be done at 6 months of age hmm. right so basically less than one year of age one eye checkup should be done and we recommend 6 months because yes parents may not get to know whether the child has a normal sight or not if the eye normal or not but we as doctors can understand whether the child has normal sight or not we have various ways by we get to know that right that's number one so at 6 months one checkup should be done if the child is absolutely normal at that stage then the second checkup should be done preschool so just at the time you are planning to send your child to school just before that you need to get your second checkup done after that every 5 years you need to get and i'm assuming that the child is normal at all of these stages god forbid if there is a problem then the checkup schedule will change completely mm-hmm. i'm talking about children who are absolutely normal and the doctor says koi problem nahi hai you are fine so those children one before one year of age one before starting school and one every within every 5 years one checkup should be done mm-hmm. if child has is detected to have any eye problem then based on what the eye problem is checkup schedule will change for example the most common problem that impact children today is eye glasses when we were kids only 5% children had eye glasses yeah. today almost 30 to 35% children have eye glasses now how do parents get to know that the children mm-hmm. have eye glasses one is of course as i mentioned regular checkups but there are other signs and symptoms for example as i mentioned if you notice the child is doing like this or going to close or not responding to yes or exactly their eyes are watering or they're rubbing their eyes too much right or if you notice that the child is complaining of frequent headaches and child child children complain of headaches you know we get so many kids who come to us parents get them to us because they actually say that as soon as he start any kind of work like you know uh, uh, like reading right. writing or whatever that time they start uh, getting headaches so there are uh, ways and means by which Uh, everybody can get to know that the child probably has some eye problems so these are the eye problems which are solvable but i'm sure there are a lot of unfortunate children who are born with eye problems mm. right their eyes are just deformed some of these conditions are not treatable yeah but some of these conditions are treatable if we can detect them at the right time which means earliest possible mm. right and majority are treatable only actually a small minority are the ones where let's say the eye development has not been complete or eye is malformed those are the conditions where we can't give the vision back to the child unfortunately and these fortunately these kids are just handful 
डॉक्टर बन्ना एक सजेशन दीजिए जैसे आपने बोला कि छह महीने में बच्चे का चेकअप होना चाहिए फिर टू इयर्स या फाइव इयर्स में तो व्हाट डू यू थिंक जैसे बच्चों का जब बच्चे पैदा होते हैं पूरा डोज का कौन सा इंजेक्शन कब लेना है कैसे लेना है उसका एक पूरा का पूरा डॉक्टर बना के देते हैं तो उसी में एक एक्सेप्शनली ये भी एड होना चाहिए कि छह महीने में बच्चे का एक बार आई चेकअप भी कराए तो इट वॉन्ट इट बी बेनिफिट यू नो बेनिफिशियल फॉर द पेरेंट्स एज वेल कि चलिए ऐसे नहीं तो ऐसे कम से कम बच्चे का एक बार आई चेकअप हो जाएगा वट यू सजेस्ट होना चाहिए कि नहीं होना चाहिए डॉक्टर जी आई कंप्लीटली अग्री एंड दैट्स रीजन वेन वी वर सो वी यूज टू रन अ प्रोग्राम कॉल नने नयन which was again part of our trust so nane nayan was one of the again at that time it was the largest child eye care initiative in wow. the world we checked um, the eyes of close to 6000 children in one year and we used to go to schools to do the eye checkups and our pediatric ophthalmologist used to go um, and do those checkups herself hmm. and we used to advocate at that hmm. time itself hmm. that these are the recommended checkups and this is what should be done hmm. but you know i'll i'll tell you one thing where it's not a matter of life and death hmm. and um, the... like for example you know uh, i mean in children of course good thing is majority of the children are fine and even if you detect you check them when they actually have a problem it is still okay but for hmm. diabetics huh. it is it's truly criminal that they don't get their retina check up done on a yearly basis hmm. right but you tell me how many diabetics are getting their eyes checked every year or how many diabetics are even getting their eyes checked i know right so See, there are of course these are very good recommendations and we have proper recommendations even of if you are a diabetic if you are a hypertensive if you have heart disease so there are recommendations okay. and guidelines for everything okay. but the problem in our society is not about whether you know those guidelines or not the problem is how many people will follow, follow those that. guidelines <laughs> yeah i agree completely agree <laughs> the vaccines we still follow because we know that the child can die if you don't vaccinate the child mm -hmm. right those diseases can be life threatening mm -hmm. so that's why we vaccinate our children but obviously these things uh, you know as as human beings we we are reactive we react when mm -hmm. there is a problem we are not we... proactive oh very good great sahi bola very true agree agree right? so oh, i think and, Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm saying, uh, so it's very true that we are reactive people. We are not proactive, or we are not active or action oriented people. And wherein um, I think it's uh, the time that is uh, we have to manage, or we should manage, or we need to manage, uh, because most of the problems. It's not only about eyes, but most of the problems in our Uh, you know life are controllable or curable if they are been identified or detected at the right time mm -hmm. and at the right stage and as uh, uh, we do have you know support of people like mm -hmm. dr vandana who is uh, not only doing uh, you know her part as a professional but as a citizen of this country see uh, even after uh, getting education uh, in stanford university for her masters mm -hmm. she back to india just to you know serve uh, people of, of this nation apart from that she is doing lots of social work mm -hmm. and as she has mentioned about uh, nanne kadam mm -hmm. and uh, that awareness walk also mm -hmm. and i check up camps so it's not only they check uh, the sites but at the same time for the people who need you know glasses they are distributing free glasses mm -hmm. also Uh, so but that is only for deserving people if somebody is affluent uh, having affluent background and he is coming <laughs> i also need to be, please don't come uh, because uh, they need to you know yes he remains dp vanna ji ne bilkul free eye check up ke liye announce kiya tha okay aaiye hum log free check up karenge <laughs> we were they right so, vanna ji is not okay. yes exactly so it is not only for women but different uh, you know sectors of society they are covering they uh, do so many uh, things for uh, old age people old age homes and um, for youth they are going to different schools colleges and uh, so many activities they are doing just to educate people that uh, we need to protect and we need to be little alert about ourselves and our life and hmm. organ donation i think is the only donation or the best donation any one can do uh, being in the uh, you know body and even after the body so this hmm. is uh, one of the foremost objective of all the activities uh, that uh, dr vandana with uh, her you know associate uh, institutions bodies 
she is doing and she is trying to educate people one a uh, more uh, you know uh, normally uh, like we feel very excited and good like when if somebody tells us ki what is going to happen in future hmm right uh, so for that uh, to cater to that aspect also dr vandana as she mentioned uh, that uh, she is uh, you know consultant and uh, in the management committee of fit of mm. fly so she started co-founded one of the organizations by the name of fit of fly wherein mm. uh, with the different technologies uh, and uh, different gadgets uh, they are able to identify that one particular child is prone to what kind of disease right mm. and i would request vandana to uh, share little more about it so that uh, you know people who are watching this show and who are going to watch this show later on they can uh, at least uh, uh, control you know to uh, a large extent whatever kind of uh, problems uh, health issues uh, they or their kids might be facing uh, at later stage so vandana please share about the fit of life also and how uh, and how uh, you know reliable the results are so please share some stories about fit of life hmm. sure thanks anshul you know first of all again i'd like to say that i just i'm i'm no longer a co-founder and i i would not like to use uh, that for myself um, okay. i think the true co-founders are the one who continue to run the organization um, right so I, but yeah i'm very uh, closely associated with them and uh, i think the programs that they're running are fantastic currently besides taking care of children who could have uh, you know various problems which can be solved using technology and right kind of guidance and nutritional advice they are actually also taking care of lot of other disease segments so they are a digital therapeutics organization and what they do is they their main area of focus today is diabetes because india is becoming a diabetic capital of the world oh, in fit of life uh, they they have several diabetes management programs depending on what kind of diabetes somebody is affected with they also have a diabetes reversal program now there are certain subsets of diabetics who are actually amenable to reversal now i will not say that everybody can reverse their diabetes but there are certain specific segment of of diabetics whose diabetics whose diabetes can actually be reversed and after doing that assessment they can actually suggest the diabetes reversal program or diabetes management program and these programs are run by the name of dibiflav and then they have dibiflav pro dibiflav reversal etc through these programs they are able to give personalized guidance help and mentorship around what kind of foods what kind of lifestyle what kind of activity and how do we manage and reverse diabetes so that's one part of the programs that they run the second part of the program that they run is for women women who have diseases like pcod now pcod is not just a disease which impacts fertility it actually impacts the self esteem of those women in a very very big way because pcod women have you know they have increased weight they sometimes have a lot of facial hair they are infertile and they have whole lot of other self esteem issues yeah. so these are the women who not just require medical help but they also require a lot of counseling help you know uh, nutritional guidance uh, exactly so all kind of you know help and that the program that they run for pcod takes care of all of those aspects and mm-hmm. some of their programs for example a woman i obviously i cannot take any name for confidentiality mm-hmm. but a woman who had pcod she had almost suicidal tendencies she had mm-hmm. suicidal thoughts and she uh, yeah like she was a daughter of a very renowned doctor so she enrolled herself into this program she first of all she lost 11 kgs weight she um, you know her her self esteem and the way she used to look at herself changed completely because of the working with the you know the uh, psychotherapist and uh, through the uh, right uh, guidance she started exercising she started eating right and she could reverse most of her problems right so and then they also run um, the pregnancy management so women have lots of challenges uh, with pregnancy right and when you are pregnant you have to handle hundreds of things besides your own pregnancy so they also have a program where they help pregnant women manage their lifestyle their nutrition all the do's and the don'ts everything for them and then they also continue to support these pregnant women post their delivery for the lactation and child care and then of course as rightly anshul mentioned that the pediatric program is one of their uh, biggest programs where they take care of children with all kinds of issues whether it's repeated infections or it's overweight children or it's children who have some kind of other uh, problems which are not getting solved by traditional medicine 
So those are the children they take care of. So they run all of these programs under uh, the umbrella of Fitterfly. Of course, all of these programs have different names. So, uh, you know, for example, the pregnancy program is called Prexstar. The weight loss program where somebody is extremely overweight, uh, that's called Reset, uh, uh, Reset 23, I think. Uh, and of course, their diabetes management is called Diabetes Program. So anybody who has these kind of problems, of course, they can you know get in touch with them. They have a website called fitterfly.com. And through that, uh, they can get in touch with the team and get enrolled into these programs. And I... Because I wanted to understand that what different activities that I am doing are impacting my lifestyle. So to my surprise, certain foods were really bad for me. Those foods, for example, um, you know, if you, uh, you know, if, if we commonly say, Are Maggie nahi khana chahi, Maggie achha nahi hai. Ya, Are ye nahi khana chahi, ye achha nahi hai. But we don't know how it is impacting our own body, right? So, for example, Maggie, of course, was really bad for me. Maggie was uh, shooting my blood sugar like crazy. So, they put a device on a person. It's like a sticker. That device measures your sugar every 15 minutes. And then they correlate it with your sleep. They correlate it with your... Uh, your activities and they correlate it with the um, the foods that you're eating mm -hmm. and based on that personalized recommendations are given so I was developing nighttime hypoglycemia and that was really impacting my energy levels through the day so when I identified nighttime hypoglycemia I modified mm -hmm. how I was eating at night and what I was eating at night so I started eating more fat rich food like I started eating so I won't say like fat rich food means like I was eating pastry no not really um, <laughs> but I started eating nuts in the in the evening, especially on the days mm. I was doing intermittent fasting. Mm. So that was giving me sustained, uh, you know, nutrition through the night. And that reduced the incidence of nighttime hypoglycemia for me, even though I'm not a diabetic, but that was very shocking for me to learn that I was having nighttime hypoglycemia. Mm. So I think some of these programs are not just good for people who are diabetics. Uh, obviously, they are excellent for people who are diabetics because their whole life depend on managing their diabetes well. Mm -hmm. But even for normal people like me who are extremely conscious, that I want to die healthy, basically. Yes. I want to die walking, that, literally. That, like, that's, that's what, what I tell my husband, that I want to die walking. Die walking. Uh -huh. And for that, I have to start taking action right now itself. While my body is still good, while I'm still healthy and active, mm -hmm. I have to make sure I continue to stay healthy and active till I die. And for that, I feel these programs are just fantastic. Okay, we think that Anshul Ji should ask Dr. Banna that Dr. Ma'am, what is your glow current? The glow you're having on your face, it's really charming, you, you, you really look. And what you have told us so many things, Banna Ji, what do we tell you? We are क्या बोले धराशाही होके गिर चुके हैं आपकी इतनी सारी प्यारी प्यारी बातें सुन के ऐसा लग रहा है कि हम एक्चुअली कुछ कर ही नहीं रहे हैं अभी तक वी आर डूइंग नथिंग अंशुल जी आप क्या बोलेंगे इस बारे में हम शायद कुछ नहीं कर रहे हैं अपनी सेहत के लिए कि डॉक्टर होके भी इतना केयर लाइक मालूम चल गया कि हम ये खाते हैं तो ये होगा ये खाते हैं हम जैसे के लिए कुछ बताएं डॉक्टर बनना कि हम कैसे ग्लो लेकर आए फेस पे आई देयर आर जस्ट वॉक करते करते पिलर्स राइट एंड and by the way, the glow on your face, Neeti, is I don't know whether you can see it in on your on own video or not. Is I think it's just really fabulous. So frankly, you don't even need to even think about that. And for me, probably it's just oily skin and nothing else. <laughs> but yeah, I think for overall, like if I have to give um, just an overall advice, there are three pillars, right, of good health. One is healthy eating. Second is exercise. And third is good sleep. And when I say good sleep means a stress, like try to reduce stress, manage stress. I can't say stress-free life because nobody can have a stress-free life, but managing stress so that you can have a good sleep. So if you can just handle these three pillars, hmm. I think your life can be good. Now, it's having said that, course, there are... Sorry, sure, but... I, I think, um, and this is a topic that I'm extremely passionate about. I can talk for hours hmm. together on on okay. healthy nutrition on health uh, fitness because i think that's my if i had a avatar then i think that avatar will be only talking about that all the time <laughs> she, she i think spends lots of hours in gym along with the oh dr. my arbinder. god oh my god so arbind dr arbinder is uh, yeah. your fortunate husband of uh, dr vandana okay and, uh, so big clap for him as well because yeah, he's starting me the and, way she and, has you know praised बहुत ही कम लेडीज ऐसी होती हैं जो अपने हस्बैंड को <laughs> बोलती है कि उनकी वजह से नहीं बट ट्रूली ही डिजर्व दैट ट्रूली ही डिजर्व दैट यू नो आई एंड अंशुल हैज इंटरैक्टेड विद हिम सो आई थिंक आई एम श्योर शी इज सेकंड 
yes so i i can i can yes i am uh, evidence of that that they are uh, best couple in navi mumbai the most charming and the enthusiastic couple and above that they are the fitness freaks wow they spend mm-hmm. so many hours together you know in gym and uh, they like whenever i have seen their pictures not in uh, you know their coat doctor coat but in gym <laughs> like what <laughs> <laughs> so that shows that how close uh, the fitness is uh, to their <laughs> life and uh, Vandana is uh, actually, you know, my, वो बोलते ना जीती जागती मूर्ति है उसकी मिसाल है जिम की मिसाल है और मैंने फिटनेस की बोला था स्टार्टिंग में भी बोला था कि यू नो हैव एन एप्पल अ डे टू कीप द डॉक्टर अवे नहीं ऐसे डॉक्टर को कौन अवे रखेगा ना अभी हमें एप्पल की आदत करना पड़ेगा ग्रेट ग्रेट खुश रहने के लिए हम हैशटैग वीमेन पावर चलाया हुआ समझ लीजिए बस तो बताइए हम लेडीज को खाने में क्या ध्यान रखना चाहिए डॉक्टर बंदा किस तरीके से आई थिंक वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट agree so i think uh, say first of all india is a very diverse country right we have uh, like 32 different languages and similarly we have like different cuisines yes. right our overall indian diet is very heavy in carbohydrates irrespective of the region that you look at whether you look at you know north or you look at west or you look at south mm-hmm. we just eat lots of carbohydrates yes. i think one very important thing for us to be mindful of is that we should have a balanced diet Mm-hmm. and irrespective of whether you are a vegetarian or you are a non vegetarian you can have a very balanced diet mm-hmm. so for example now if i if i have to talk about let's say my own diet mm. i make sure that i consume like lots of fruits lots of vegetables mm. and rich sources of protein so for a vegetarian diet which are the rich sources of protein of course there are pulses mm. then you can if if you feel if you are for example as anshul mentioned i do uh, i mean i mean of course an avid uh, fitness uh, enthusiast so i do work out for 2 hours every day and for that i do actually take a whey protein uh, shake also every day but i don't necessarily recommend it to everybody that depends on your requirements we do need protein uh, in our diet so there are macronutrients and there are micronutrients on the macronutrients we have carbohydrates proteins fat right we have to make sure that we eat them in the right proportion then comes our micronutrients micronutrients includes your vitamins and minerals all your vitamins and minerals you get from your food only again fruits and vegetables are the richest sources of your minerals and vitamins deficiency of any of those can also be harmful so i think we need to make sure that whatever we are consuming we do it in a very balanced manner so if you like for example if you like a paratha if you are a north indian like for example for the longest time my breakfast used to be paratha right i mean neeti is saying of course you know, like she yes, like aloo paratha, paratha paneer ka paratha mixed veg paratha how can we try those <laughs> north indian paratha <laughs> even delhi's famous so you know and it's paratha. fine hmm it is and my in laws still eat paratha even today their morning they have to have paratha right but what we do is we don't give them a fried paratha anymore i mean i don't know if you can call it a paratha any longer but for example you can do certain hacks right instead of having a fried paratha you can have a unfried paratha so you still get the taste sure it may not be as tasty as a fried paratha and you can have a cheat day once a week where you can actually fry it and have a fried paratha but we need to make sure that we are eating healthy fats now healthy fats may definitely ghee is one of the healthy fat but the ghee not available is not the one that is available in the market we don't know how it is made so of course that becomes a big challenge for people like us who live in the city that how do you make sure that you're actually getting like pure ghee right and for that uh, if you can there are now lots of startups which give you pure ghee so i uh, order uh, through some of those startups i ordered through some of my friends who have actually their own fa- uh, like they have a full dairy uh, in their own farm houses so through that you can make sure that you are consuming the healthy fats right so for example if your breakfast is paratha you can still have paratha but maybe you mm-hmm. can also make sure that you consume a source of protein with it because when you are consuming paratha then your paratha mm-hmm. is either made from wheat or mix, made from mixed atta better to make that paratha not from the wheat atta exclusively you can use flour flours which are mixed 
So you can have wheat, you can mix chana atta into it. And you can also add, you know, if possible, then even jowar bajra. So we eat what we call as fitter flour. So fitter flour is actually done by fitter fly as a company. They have, they have uh, come up with fitter flour, okay. which is made from chana dal, black chana, mm. um, soya uh, atta and uh, amaranth. Okay. So all four ingredients are there in different proportion, which is less a source of carbohydrates. It has higher percentage of uh, proteins and it has no gluten. Because gluten is not very good for human body, right? So anyway, again, it's not something that everybody has to do. But even if you're having a wheat, but you can just put in your own house, you can put like chana or something into your atta, make it more mix uh, atta rather than just a pure wheat atta, have an unfried one. And then along with that, you can have one source of protein, could be paneer alongside, could be a bowl of dal alongside, could be sprouts alongside, anything, whatever you like, right? And then there are other sources of protein also. For example, you can have quinoa, quinoa salad on the side right so that could be your breakfast for example okay. then a mid meal between your breakfast and your uh, uh, lunch okay. you can have some fruits okay. better to have fruit separate from food because if you try to combine so fruits have fructose which is again which can raise your sugar level okay. so better to consume fruits separate from your food so you can have some fruits and any seasonal fruit is good so okay. some people believe are mango will is bad papaya is bad because they are rich in so nothing like that. You can actually have those fruits also. If you like mango, please have a mango. Don't deprive yourself from mangoes. I love mangoes and I have mango. Uh, when the season is there, I'll have one mango a day. So it's fine. Then your lunch time. Again, it's good to, um, you don't have to deprive yourself uh, of, you know, food, but don't eat to your full. Okay. Eat to maybe 75% fullness, okay. Okay. right? Um when you are full, by then that you have already consumed too much, ah. right? So eat to your 75%. And again, make sure that you have mix. Like it's, again, you're not just having toda sa sabzi, toda sa dal and bhot sara chawal uh -huh. or bhot sari roti. Ji, ji. Have maybe one roti or maybe little rice, but have lots of dal, have lots of vegetables, lots of salad alongside. Yes. So half of your stomach, you're filling with these things only. Yes. And then remaining 25%, you can fill with maybe one roti. Ji, ji. Right. So some people are so used to roti that till the time they don't have two, three roti, they don't feel satisfied. And it's just psychological need, honestly. It's nothing else. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, then, of course, for example, uh, your lunch and then the evening, you can, if you like tea, coffee, whatever you like, you can have that. Like, I love my hot chocolate, so I'll have my hot chocolate. With that, again, you can have something healthy as a snack. Rather than eating bhujia or chips or something like that, you can have something healthy. Like you can have nuts, mm. for example. You can have mm. Badam, you can have akrot, you know, walnuts, and pistachios, and mixed nuts, you know, whatever you like. So you can have mixed nuts along with your chai, coffee, whatever. If you still crave something, you can make something healthy at home. Now there are lots of healthy snacks which are available yeah, online also. I like, I love, yes, yeah. I mean, well, so, you know, of course, you'll have to check what constitution they have. Sometimes oat is just a tiny little percentage and they call it oat biscuit <laughs> okay. honestly and they're still just maida. <laughs> yeah so you should be you should be a good uh, consumer you should check the what's written on the back and what percentage uh -huh. is actually oats in that right so or you can actually make something at home like for example i have made protein laddus and not and i'm not a cook i don't even know how to cook honestly making protein <laughs> laddus at home is like so easy just uh -huh. put uh, lots of dry fruits put little whey protein and just put little honey and just put everything together and your laddu is ready and, right? and it's ready. delicious so i have okay. one protein laddu hmm. yeah like i have one protein laddu with my hot chocolate every day and hot chocolate is not the healthiest of the thing but you know i i love hot chocolate i need something hot in the evening so i have a hot chocolate in the evening and then of hmm. course your dinner should be uh, one one important thing is have dinner at least two hours before you sleep that's one and secondly hmm. keep your dinner light as light as you can Right. Um, when mm. people say that dinner should be your lightest meal, that's actually true. Because if you eat very heavy mm. at night and at night, obviously, there's not going to be much activity. Right. It's not like you after dinner, you're going to go work out. So it's good to keep your mm. dinner light and keep a gap of at least two hours. The second hack, which uh, we realize after we put the device on ourselves, is that if you go for a walk within half an hour of your eating, irrespective of whatever that meal is, that really keeps mm -hmm. the sugar level under control so at least after dinner see i can't say people should go for a walk after breakfast yes. and lunch because most likely they have to work at that time but at least after dinner you can go for a walk 
you know that can really help stabilize the uh, spike in the sugar levels and please uh, like people sometimes think why are we even talking about sugar levels i am not a diabetic honestly you can be a diabetic depending on how your sugar levels vary today this is called glycemic variability if there is high glycemic variability today in somebody's body that's a high risk for future diabetes if you can control that variability with variability means ups and downs where suddenly it is spiking up then it is going down suddenly it is spiking up and this usually happens with very high carbohydrate rich foods like sugar or you know if eating a pastry which is like bad fat and bad sugar combined together mm. again i am not saying that you cannot have cravings once in a while i have my cheat days sunday i eat everything possible whatever i like i, I don't stop myself what is your day but rest of the days i try that absolutely absolutely so you know just eat lots of fruits and vegetables uh, through the day such a healthy healthy talk i think going on and it is going to you know uh, just uh, shape each one of Uh, life like if we'll follow what uh, dr vandana has shared with us all the tips uh, so beautiful and uh, healthy tips uh, she has shared and uh, i think it's amazing uh, vandana like it's not only about eyes but even about the whole entire body you, you know the beautifully that uh, you are uh, sharing your opinion and in fact your own experience also mm. so it's really amazing and uh, so what do you say uh, miss neeti about it अरे अंशु जी मुझे ऐसा लग रहा है कि देखिए हम डॉक्टर के पास जाते हैं तो हमें कंसल्टेंसी फीस देनी पड़ती है <laughs> या विदाउट फीस हमारे पास डॉक्टर आके इतनी सारी इम्पोर्टेंट इम्पोर्टेंट बातें बता दी हैं कैसे अपने खाने को अच्छे से खाया जाए क्या क्या उसमें हम लोग वराइटीज कर सकते हैं या कैसे हेल्दी मील ले सकते हैं आंखों की कैसे केयर करनी चाहिए हमें और डायबिटीज ना होते हुए भी उसका चेकअप कैसे कराना चाहिए या छोटे बच्चों के लिए भी क्या आई चेकअप मस्ट है ये मुझे लग रहा है एक सवा घंटे में इतनी सारे नॉलेज डॉक्टर मैम एक क्वेश्चन तो जरूर है आपसे इतनी सारी नॉलेज का आप यदि हम आते आपके हॉस्पिटल में तो क्या चार्जेस होते हैं सो गाइस हु इज वॉचिंग एंड गोइंग नीति फॉर यू नथिंग For you nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so very much. उन सबको ये एक्चुअली जो भी देखने वाले हैं और जो भी देख भी रहे हैं और लेटर ऑन डेफिनेटली दे आर गोइंग टू वॉच आर सीरीज जैसे हम लोग देखते आ रहे हैं और देखते भी हैं जब हम लोग लिंक शेयर कर देते हैं अपने तो कितने ज्यादा आपको स्टार्टिंग से लेके अब तक दो देवर सो मैनी क्वेश्चन लाइन अप में बहुत सारी चीजें पूछना चाह रही थी आपके मेंटर कौन है बचपन में क्या क्या हर्डल्स हुई लेकिन वाइल यू वुड स्टार्टिंग एंड वाइल यू वुड टॉकिंग आई वॉज लाइक नहीं नहीं डॉक्टर मैम बोल रहे हैं उनको बोलने दीजिए उनको सुनिए वो क्या बोल रहे हैं क्या इम्पोर्टेंट है बिकॉज इफ डॉक्टर इज देयर और वो ऐसे कुछ बताए कि क्या क्या लेना है क्या क्या खाना है तो मुझे लग रहा है सारे क्वेश्चन अपने एक किनारे हो जाते हैं वही हमारे सारे क्वेश्चन एक किनारे रहे हैं आज <laughs> फिर भी अंशुल जी एक छोटी मोटी एक क्वेश्चन और हो सकता है इफ यू हाँ वंदना जी आप एक बात बताए आप दिल्ली से हैं आपने बताया कंजर्वेटिव फैमिली से हैं डेफिनेटली हम समझ सकते हैं वो एरा क्या हुआ होगा थोड़ा सा बताएं कुछ ऐसी हर्डल जिससे आप खुद में पिस्ट ऑफ हो गए हो कि नहीं अब इसका समाधान कैसे होता है लाइफ में ऐसा हर एक के साथ होता है तो हमारे जो ऑडियंस हमारे जो दर्शक आने वाले देखने वाले उनको भी समझ में आएगा कि ऐसे ही कोई ऊंचाइयों पर नहीं पहुंचता नीचे नीचे स्टेप बाय स्टेप हर हर्डल को पार करके ऊंचाई आती है इंसान के जीवन में So honestly, uh, you know, even though my parents are very conservative, but then they realized कि मैं उनकी बात नहीं सुनती हूँ uh, Then they told me one thing कि कुछ ऐसा मत करना जिससे हमें uh, you know जब yeah. we feel uh, हाँ कि हमें शर्म आए कि तुम हमारी बेटी हो Otherwise, don't tell us what you're doing. And that worked out very well. Uh, my mother used to hate the fact that I was in athletics because in our family, wearing a shorts was like a big deal. and i could not wear shorts so i used to actually wear my track pants and then go to the you know to uh, my events and then just remove my track pants there but i would never tell my parents that uh, i'm i'm like part of i'm still participating in athletics so that was one big challenge which i overcome i just continue to do it without uh, telling them and um, um, and you know as part of one of the times when i had a opportunity to play national wow. i had to go to the stadium every day Gee. for practice after school mm. which was a 3 hour practice so by the time i used to come back it used to be evening so my mother used to get like really angry 
कि यू नो कहाँ घूमती रहती हो तुमको कुछ शर्म नहीं है क्या तुमको फैमिली की पड़ी नहीं है क्या यू नो ऑल काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स एंड आई कुड अंडरस्टैंड इट्स इट वॉजेंट यू नो इट वॉज इन बैड थिंग दैट्स या राइट राइट सो and i did face lot of challenges because unfortunately sometimes in delhi when as a girl you know i was in what class 7th at the time uh, when i used to come on uh, you know local transport sometimes there were incidents which uh, left like a little mark on my my this thing and i remember that one time i actually stopped going not because of what my mother was saying but because of what was happening in in general like you know some some bad incidents happened and i stopped going hmm. and after that the surprising bit was one day my mother asked oh, ki are tum kyun nahi ja rahe ah, ho okay ha so i said nahi aap to chahte nahi ho na main jaau so she said tum jana chahti ho na hmm. i said ha i would like to go so she said acha theek hai fir tum jaao hmm. so i was i was so um, you know because she was trying to do something which was out of her comfort zone yes, yes. out of what she knew is correct yes, yes. out of what she uh, thought should be the right thing for me and that was very motivating for me that she is prioritizing her kid uh, what is important for her kid over everything else yes ji yes. ji right and according to me uh, yeah when <laughs> yeah right like when you can do that uh, for people who are really close to you like today if i look at my husband he is extremely busy and sometimes my friends tell me ki are Are you so busy all the time? How do you tolerate it? I said I don't have to. That's the good thing. I don't have to tolerate it. I don't have to tolerate him. I don't have to tolerate him. That's the good thing. <laughs> but but jokes apart, right? Like it's important to him. And this is a lesson that I learned very early on in my life that when something is important to people who are close to you, who are your loved ones, you just let them do it. Yeah. You know, you just just. encourage them to do it and you tell them that you are with them no matter what mm mm-hmm. and that's what i do every time you know um, uh, like whenever even i feel like i don't give you time i said i am busy man i don't need your time so of course i do it in a joking way but <laughs> you know indirectly it's yeah indirectly it's my way of telling him that please don't worry you know you do what you have to do whatever is important to you so that one challenge you know really um, even though it was at that time very challenging for me as a young girl to see whether i should go or not go i'm facing this challenge in the dtc buses and on top of that my mother always uh, is bothering me but when mm-hmm. she said that i actually went back i started going to the mm-hmm. practice again um and uh, i started handling those boys also after that because it just gave me so much confidence ah, okay. so every time somebody okay. would try to misbehave with me i would like uh, you know literally show them that i would stare them at them and uh, which basically imply ki kuch tumne abhi aur bola na to main aake tumko ek lagane wali hu type of a thing so, you know <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so yeah i think you that was one little challenge and second was my marriage my marriage was a big challenge honestly Okay, uh, is it because it point? wasn't uh, no. So in our families, you can't couldn't do love marriages at that time. Okay, and that was my, your marriage. My parents didn't. It was uh, well, you know. I hope my parents are not listening to this, but it was a love to marriage marriage. Perfectly fine. I mean, loving, you know, that's a perfect. That, that's a you know, uh, what to say? ये उसका charm है आपकी शादी का फिर. <laughs> good love is still on be happy dr bakshi is writing <laughs> no 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 of course i'm i'm one of the you know touch wood i'm one of the luckiest women to be married to the person that i am married and my life honestly changed after i got married to him whatever i have accomplished it's all accomplished after i uh, got married to him certain aspects of my personality were defined when i was a kid uh, and as a kid only i was like this that i knew what i wanted and i would go for it but um, after marriage i didn't have to face any resistance whatever i wanted to do whatever i put my heart to or my my head to you know i could just do it uh, without any issue ever so yeah 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 that is actually evident from you know the chemistry that they share uh, dr arbindar and dr vandana and they are the beautiful lovely couple uh, and uh, you know, very friendly and cooperative uh, जस्ट 
please uh, switch on your video and uh, be there with us. So he's our honorable woman, yes. <laughs> Dr. Bakshi. You tell him only we are here. Hi, sir. A very good evening. Hi, sir. Hi. Good evening. Hi, good evening to each one of you, all the three beautiful women, the three beautiful eyes, the vision, my oh. God, <laughs> and the smile. Showing ah. all the 22s around. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, you know look, at, look at me. Uh, I have small eyes and eyes under hair. I was a child, my little girl, Bubbly. Maybe I will send this video to her. She used to laugh on me. What are you doing? You have a small eye, a small eye. तो तब भी हम कहते थे छोटी छोटी आंखों से बड़े बड़े सपने क्या बात है छोटी छोटी आंखों से बड़े बड़े सपने एंड व्हेन आई लेफ्ट माय होम टाउन कश्मीर एंड आई स्टडीड इन जयपुर व्हेन आई केम टू दिल्ली आई वाज जस्ट लुकिंग फॉर अ जॉब एंड इन द मीनवाइल आई स्टार्टेड डूइंग मॉडलिंग एंड व्हेन आई स्टार्टेड डूइंग मॉडलिंग आई आई वाज द आई एम द फर्स्ट मॉडल फॉर चेयर एंड शर्ट्स इन द कंट्री that time. Wow. <laughs> so then posters like this, big posters were made. Those days mobile nahi tha, kuch nahi tha. So courier nahi tha. By mail man, a post office ke through, bade bade poster beje, apne pahan ke paas, kar beje. So chung ko poster mil gaye, to you know what she did, she said, Uri, ये क्या पागल बने बैराजी मॉडल बन गया बैराजी मॉडल बन अंदर की आंखें मॉडल बन गया अंदर की आंखें मॉडल बन गया तो आप कैसे मॉडल हैं सो टुडे व्हेन यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द विजन एंड यू गोट सच अ ग्रेट ब्यूटीफुल डॉक्टर विद यू एंड आई एम अमेज्ड टू सी द स्टोरी ऑफ एक्सेलेंस एंड यू राइटली सेड नीति दैट वी बेसिकली थॉट वी विल टॉक अबाउट आईज and as a doctor who is looking at the vision but then the way both of you these are my women power both anshul and niti great women power of this moment who take so much best out of you and you could give so much he is your best friend or she is your best friend who takes the best out of you mm. i repeat she is your best friend who takes the best out of you so they could take the best out of you and you could give the best to the audience ladies and gentlemen who are watching it right now from us canada africa middle east asia pacific or those who may be watching it later see the beauty of this beautiful wonderful dr vandana and on doctor's day i actually sent you the flyer i don't have our whatsapp it's on your group please send my flyer of doctor's day to dr vandana who talks about dedicatedly optimizing care through ownership rebirth because covid 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 hmm. gave rebirth a lot of people and hats off and salutes to doctors for what they did hmm. and this doctor of yours niti and anshul not only talked about eyes he talked about and finally she proved to be a great dietitian and parathas turning into unfit patat parathas and healthy and she says healthy paratha healthy bats the neighbors in our village healthy bats so it was such a such an amazing talk and especially when she talked about advocacy which i loved very much and then three things are very important for me and which in fact whatever help you required and you can't in people on i pledging in india we have no awareness no communication no education on eye pledging so i think you can actually create a big movement around the country on eye pledging aapko shayad ye andaaza nahi hai aaj mai in 1.3 billion population of the country i think there will not be even I mean, there will be only five percent people who know about eye pledging. The way you explain today, Jee. so in case we can think about looking for the moment of starting eye pledging, schools, colleges, hospitals, corporate houses, everywhere, because the people will 
understand that it's not during the time, it's after you die, immediately within so and so time. But you need to announce and you need to write it down and give it to the people in advance. Mm -hmm. So because with one eye donation, she said you can have three to four visions of life. So can we do something on eye pledge? Mm -hmm. And second important thing which I loved, and I want to participate in this, walk against blight. Mm -hmm. Now, can this moment be created in different cities of the country? Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, Noida, Bangalore, Pune. So create a moment which can be walk against blind. And huge number of people will walk with you. Mm -hmm. So these are two things. Because I want to tell you, Dr. Vandana, you have come on this show. We are not going to leave it. You have got to do something for hashtag women power, a global moment. One million women on this platform by 2024. So under this, in case you can create these two movements in the country, I am committed to support you for this. Because these are the two things which can make a difference to a lot of lives beyond us. And now this is the time for us to do it. Why don't we do it? And second is, which I uh, certainly loved your talk was, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, various NGOs, various schools, business schools getting involved. And I don't know what is this fit, fit play? What is that fit play organization? Fit or fly. Fit or fly. Fit fit or fly. Fit fit or fly. fly. More, we need to know more about it. So on behalf of uh, hashtag Even Power Global Moment, I'm here to thank you so much, Dr. Vandana. For your time, for the initial I'm telling you, we did not even know this. For the initial, I think it is simply a legal bachelor. We did not know that how we have crossed one and a half. I have been waiting, but then I'm sure I'm going to go to the question, but I'm important. That is a very important question. And then you talked about Delhi and you talk about going. Uh, you know, going out as an athlete in shorts and your mom stopping, you had an incident. So these are the challenges and humility. Mm -hmm. Your example, your storytelling today, Dr. Vandana, is going to be powerful for many women who are watching you now or who will be watching you later. But when you can do it, why can't they do it? Yes. That is the purpose. That is the purpose of mm -hmm. this particular, uh, you know, series what we have and we have reached around 700,000 uh, ladies around the world in respect to our oh. caste color. Yes, we caste, color, religion and nationality and we have a target of 1 million women and in fact 7th of July we have a big event with Asia University of Women and wherein uh, Cherry Blair is going to be part of this. That is the way this movement is spreading wings in 2020s. And I have a lot of respect for people like Anshu, Nidhi, Varsha, Milani, Shafali, Angie, Hani, all the Sunny who have placed their time and create this moment for I am not alone. There are a lot of women around, and I feel very honored. And Ashki date me whenever. Uh, Kids talk to me, they say, no, no, you have women power wala program, you know, it's a So, yeah, because my, my kids, they, they, they started talking. Earlier, they were not liking it. But mm -hmm. now they start talking. Abhi unhone dekha, Malni Avasti ka, abhi aari hai wo, abhi subuhi khan aari hai next program hai. Balmi Joshi is also there, right? Balmi Joshi is also coming. So, uh, now they have, they have realized earlier they said, what do you get out of it? What do you do it? <laughs> but then mm -hmm. it's powerful. And uh key combination Joanna Jukal Bandi both powerful. I love your Jukal Bandi. I thank love you. I, I hope you. You. you're going back to Bombay or you're still in uh, Yeah, then? yeah, no, I'm I'm back to Mumbai. He's now. back to Mumbai. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Vandanaji, uh, uh, impressive talk, indeed, 
लॉट ऑफ लर्निंग फॉर लॉट ऑफ पीपल लॉट ऑफ लर्निंग फॉर मी मैं अब ये देखूंगा ये हेल्दी पराठा और हेल्दी फैट्स क्या होते हैं बट देन एट दैटिंग लॉट ऑफ केयर बट एट द सेम टाइम बड़ी सिंपल वे में हमें और कुछ आई Good, good, great. Vandana, you you have muted. Yes, your... thank you very much. Uh, you know, it was truly an honor and privilege to be here and to share uh, about my life and some of my learnings and experiences. Um, and you know, of course, when there are amazing people like you three who actually uh, come forward, spend your time, get people like me on this podium, um, and spread the right messages in the community, that's how we all learn, we all grow, and we all develop. and this whole community and society evolved so you know kudos to you and you know salute to you for uh, all three of you for all the Hello. great initiatives thank you so thank you very, very much vasudhi thank you panna shubharathri ji ji shubharathri anybody watching now around the world or anybody who is going to be watching later around the world this has been a very amazing session with yeah. anshul niti along with vandana he is vandana He is vibrant, and his nitty, and his knowledge, and natural. He is anshul, and he is always attitude. What a powerful! God bless. Attitude. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. He is. He is. You know, dedicated and uh, devoted. No doubt. So, yeah, he is dedicated, devoted. Efforts. We all are doing wonderful. And uh, I think as it is said, na, jinke irade nek hote, unke chahane wale anek hote hain. So Vandana mm-hmm. is uh, somebody like, uh, unke irade itne dek hain ki there are so many people uh, who want to be like uh, Dr. Vandana Jain, and uh, the way she is contributing towards society, I think it is amazing. And so many things that she has not covered, but due to time constraint, I think we will not be able to cover it uh, further. But she is doing so many things uh, which uh, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, we could not discuss here and i think we all need to learn from uh, dr vandana that we should uh, you know contribute back to the society and uh, de- whatever uh, we have whatever insights whatever knowledge whatever uh, potential we have we should uh, give it back to our own people and uh, as it is said that know what sparks the light in you we hmm. should know what sparks the light in you so that in your own way you can eliminate the world beautiful love thank you so much thank you so much dr vandana anju ji ek 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 mere paas bhi hai vanna ji ke liye jo humne likha tha vanna ji aapke liye ki kaam karo aisa ki pehchan ban jaye jo bachpan mein hurdle thi usse ubar ke aapne apni pehchan banayi to kaam karo aisa ki pehchan ban jaye chalo aise ki nishan ban jaye अरे जिंदगी तो हर कोई काट लेता है अरे जिंदगी तो हर कोई काट लेता है अगर दम है तो वैसे जियो कि मिसाल बन जाए तो आप यू आर अमंग थैंक यू सो मच डॉक्टर वर्ना थैंक यू hashtag women power a global movement having presence in more than 20 countries yeah. thank you so much and please join this movement so that we can empower each one of us so it is a mutual empowering movement that uh, dr bakshi has started thank you so much don't forget wednesday okay. program be thank there you. wednesday there, there's a program okay okay thank you so very much <laughs> and stay blessed stay safe yeah. let's have her on facebook she's in mumbai soon Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Once the situation is normal, we will have that. <laughs> thank you. 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 Thank you